The idea of a Mario racing game goes as far back as 1987 with the Famicom Grand Prix F1 race and its sequel the following year. Non-Japanese gamers would never see a release in their lands. Something of greater significance, though, would materialize in 1992. By that point, the Mario cast had a sizable character roster, and racing seemed to be a good way to bring a bunch of them together. Super Mario Kart wouldn't be a traditional run-of-the-mill racer at all. Here, you can use special items to ruin your rival's progress, like Koopa shells and banana peels. Other items can enhance your race, like speed-boosting mushrooms, high-jump feathers, and star mount. The Mode 7 graphics were masterfully employed, and augmented further by SMW-inspired vistas. The green grass and domes of Donut Plains, the seascape of Koopa Beach, the brown crags and morning sky of Chaco Island, all really nice. One of the more annoying aspects about the game, at least for me, was the CPU. The computer could always jump higher and use special items as well. Let me explain. Imagine if you're in the vicinity of Mario or Luigi. They go invincible when you're anywhere close to them. Others have a stockpile of banana peels, eggs, mushrooms, and fireballs that can be used whenever the AI feels like it. Maybe it was done to keep your abilities to use random items in check? I don't know. I have been told, though, that this has been balanced out in later games. That aside, it's a respectable start for a sub-series worthy of its own retrospect. It's as fun as all get out, but it's not a blast until you go on two-player. Be it an actual race or a fight to death in battle mode, you can't go wrong. And if you don't feel up to racing anyone, there's always time trial. There's still a ways to go until this is over, and next time, we go back to Game 4.